Range of motion is a basic technique used for examination of movement and for initiating movement into a program of therapeutic intervention. There are four types of range of motion. Passive range of motion is movement within the unrestricted range of motion for a segment that is produced entirely by an external force. There is little to no voluntary muscle contraction. Active assistive range of motion is a type of active range of motion in which assistance is provided by an outside force because the prime mover muscles need assistance to complete the motion. Active range of motion is movement within the unrestricted range of motion for a segment that is produced by an active contraction of the muscles crossing that joint. Self-assisted range of motion, the patient is taught to use the stronger extremity to move the involved extremity through ranges of motion. So I'm going to reposition the pillow to get it out of the way. And for your hand, hand positioning, you're going to want one hand on the wrist and one supporting the elbow so they're crossed. With that crossing, you'll see that your motion moves quite fluidly. And also you want your legs uh, spread out just a little bit so that you can move with the motion. And right now we're doing shoulder flexion and extension. And the next movement is shoulder abduction and adduction. We're abducting and adducting. Abduction, adduction. And next is shoulder internal rotation and external rotation. So those are the three movements at the shoulder. Then you move down to the elbow. You do elbow flexion and extension. And then supination and pronation. And moving down to the wrist, you can do flexion and extension. Also, you can just be big circles so you can get all the motions at once. And then to work with the fingers, you can flex the fingers and extend. You can take the thumb and go across the hand and back. So next we're going to do the hip passive range of motion, starting out with hip flexion and extension. And watch how my hand moves where it comes underneath the knee for extension and for flexion I bring it up on top of the knee to give it a little bit of a push. And then hip abduction and adduction. You want one hand under the knee to support and the other under the ankle. This is adduction, abduction, abduction, adduction. The next is internal and external rotation. You can bring the leg up into a 90 degree at the knee and the hip. And you can go external in rotation, internal rotation. If there's precautions to not flex the hip, you can also do that with the legs straight. Hands on the top, you uh, rotate it in for internal rotation, out for external rotation.
For the knee, you can also get a little bit more range if you bring up the, the heel towards the bottom. But that also, you get covered when you're doing your hip range of motion too. And finally, the ankle range of motion. I'm going to do this passively also. I'm going to bring the foot up, toes up, and toes down. So that's dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. And you can do big circles so you also get eversion and inversion involved. Stretching exercises for lower extremities is a basic technique used for increasing the flexibility of muscles that are tight or have increased tone and for prevention of contractures. Then is it okay if I get up onto your bed? What you want to do is straddle the leg that you're not going to stretch because you want to make sure that main that stays straight and doesn't come up off the bed. And then bring up the leg that you're going to stretch. You can either support it with your hand underneath and then you want to make sure you're over the knee to keep that straight. If that's too tiring for your arm, you can put rest it onto your shoulder and stretch that way. And for stretching, you want to hold it between 30 and 60 seconds or if it's a patient that has spasticity, you want to hold it longer for about two minutes. All right, and lower that leg back down slowly. And next we're going to stretch the heel cord. You want to bring your knee underneath to support her knee so it doesn't hyperextend. And also, when you get down here, you want to make sure you're cupping the heel. So bringing it on the inside of the foot and cupping that heel and then resting their forefoot up on your forearm. And the action is where you're going to be pulling at the heel cup and then pushing with the forearm. And then you can support down here with your other arm. And again, like the hamstring stretch, you want to hold this 30 to 60 seconds, or if there is some increased tone, you want to hold it for longer, about two minutes. And then let it go nice and slowly.